evaluation. It's something we often have to do for funders of our programs. But what if it reveals something negative about our programs? And where do we even start? I too have looked with dread on the sometimes tedious and even threatening task of evaluation. But my goal today is to convince you of uh, something I have learned through my environmental education career, that just like environmental education programs themselves, evaluation can be fun and a means of discovery. Importantly, evaluation presents an opportunity to consider our theories of change initially to specify outcomes to evaluate and later adjust our activities and outcomes, and even our theories of change based on what we find. Evaluation can be particularly valuable when educators adopt a learning through evaluation culture and open their mind to diverse evaluation approaches. So let me start out by talking about different approaches to evaluation. We often think about surveys of participants before and after a program as the gold standard for evaluation. For example, for my PhD research with youth organizations in the Bronx, New York City, I developed a survey to measure any changes in youth's sense of place. In this survey, I included Likert scale items about place attachment, such as the Bronx is the best place for what I like to do. I feel like the Bronx is part of me, and everything about the Bronx reflects who I am. In the same survey, I also included Likert scale items about ecological place, meaning like the Bronx is a place to connect with nature, and the Bronx is a place to watch animals and birds. With these and similar questions that youth answered, answered before and after their environmental education program, I was able to measure a significant increase in ecological place, meaning that youth ascribed to the Bronx. However, the youth place attachment did not change as a result of the program. At first, I was disappointed by such mixed results. I didn't see any changes that I hoped would uh, result from the youth program, but my finding was actually an opportunity to reflection, for reflection and for learning through evaluation. I learned how difficult it is to change youth long-held attachments or feelings about the place where they had lived most of their life. And most of them have already had a high level of place attachments even before environmental education programs. But I also was pleased to learn that even in one of the most densely populated cities in the world, when youth were able to plant things or survey aquatic life or to paddle rowboats on the river, they added nature and nature activities like observing wildlife and doing environmental stewardship to their perception of the urban environment in which they live. Another former Cornell graduate student, Jesse Delia, took a totally different evaluation approach with youth urban farming program in Brooklyn, New York. She used appreciative evaluation, that is, interviews with youth to gather their stories about what aspects of the program helped them build leadership, responsibility, and other youth assets. She then shared the youth stories about what worked well in the program with educators, helping them to understand what aspects of their program were important to the youth. Similar to appreciative evaluation, most significant change evaluation does not try to capture quantitative changes like I did in my sense of place survey, but rather seeks a deeper understanding of how a program works. Most significant change evaluation asks program participants a question like, in your opinion, what was the most significant change that took place in the program? Program participants can respond to such question in writing or orally, and together with the evaluators create stories of how program elements 
lead to outcomes valuable to participants. Getting back to my research in the Bronx, I also conducted interviews with youth about their experiences in environmental education programs. I then edited the interviews to publish narrative stories of how the youth felt they had changed over time through participating in the environmental education programs. Appreciative, most significant change, and narrative evaluation are all ways to to gain in-depth understanding of how participants experience different aspects of environmental education programs, whether they be the ex expectations set by educators or the chance to demonstrate leadership at a youth conference. Educators can use this information to strengthen those program elements that are helping them achieve their intended outcomes. Finally, I wanted to mention embedded evaluation or evaluation activities that also serve as learning activities. Let's say you want youth in your program to develop sense of place, so you plan activities for them to explore their local community and nearby nature. You might ask them to take photos of their favorite local places as part of the learning activities. You or another evaluator can, can then interview the program participants about the places that they choose to take pictures of and why those places are meaningful to them. The photos and interviews not only help youth develop a sense of place, but also can provide insights into the impacts of the photo elicitation learning activities. Regardless of the evaluation approach you choose and of the evaluation partners that you work with, consider the evaluation as an opportunity for learning through evaluation. And also value your own abilities as an evaluator on the front line. Get into the practice of continually learning through your own observations of your programs. In short, you may want to work with a professional or graduate students to formally evaluate your program, but don't forget that you have important first-hand knowledge and daily reflections. Together, more formal evaluations and first-hand observations can help you to understand what activities are achieving your goals and which activities need to be changed.